we can debate about the value of college and wealth building. We can debate about the value of the major that a lot of these kids are studying, right? We can debate about whether college is the path for every child. We can debate about student loans, right? We can have great debates on all of these things, but the one thing we can agree with is that the expense of college is far outpacing inflation and far outpacing people's income, right? It is skyrocketing. And I'm doing this video on May 29, 529, right? College Savings Day. So today I figure we'll talk about 529 and just college savings in general. Welcome back to another episode of the MD Investor Channel where we talk about personal finance. So, we see all, we, we've seen all the videos. The kids get the letter and it is their college they want to get accepted to and they're happy. You put it on YouTube and TikTok and all of that. But let's kind of go back and kind of let's just think about it. We do know that the average college graduate earns over the lifetime, I think it's about a million dollars. We, we also do know that there's a the student loan crisis, over a trillion dollars in student loan, right? It hampers many people. But as part of our wealth building strategy and our path to financial independence, one of the pillars has to be saving for our children's college. Right? We're going to forget about whether it is required, necessary, or the best way for every child for the moment. So, one of the accounts you'll come across in your studying of preparing for college financially for your children is the 529 account. <clears throat> so, what is the 529 account? Good question. Glad you asked. Basically, a 529 account is, is an account that is delegated. For saving for college for your children. It doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be college as you will see later on the video. But a 529 is basically an account that's delegated for saving funds for college in the simplest form. Many different states have a 529. So there's a 529 in New York, New Jersey, California, all this, most states have a 529 set up for, for the citizens of their state. One of the benefits of a 529 is that some states will give you deduction on your state income taxes for the contribution to the account. Not every state does that, but that's one of the benefits that some states will give you. So let's look at some of the pros and cons of the 529. So some of the pros of the 529 is that it's a separate account directed to college. So it's separate from all of the other funds and accounts that you have. You can start early, right? When your child is very young, so you won't have to put as much money in and let that account grow and compound over time. Um, so it doesn't have been a separate account um, is a benefit, right? So you have multiple children, you'll have different accounts, right, for each of your child. So definitely one of the pros is the tax advantages, right? The money will grow tax-free, right? We, we already said some states will give you a tax deduction for the contribution. The money will grow tax-free. And then when you withdraw that money, when your child needs it, for the tuition or a room and board or whatever, you take it out tax free. So the tax free aspect of the 529 is by far and away the greatest benefit or greatest pro of the 529. Let's look at some of the cons. So, what are some of the cons? Some of the cons of the 529. 
are that the assets in the 529 will be counted at assets of the beneficiary, right, your child, and that may adversely affect the financial aid that they're eligible for, meaning the grants and scholarships and so on. They, it may be less because they say, well, you have all this money over here in the 529. Another kind of the 529 is that it can only be used for qualified educational expenses, books, tuitions, room and board, so on. If you want to use that money and, you know, for something else, right, down payment for a house or something else, that is not a qualified educational expenses. And then you're going to be penalized. Right? It'll be 10% of the earnings will be taxed in addition to taxes on the earnings. It's going to be treated as ordinary income if it's used for non-educational purposes. So that's one of the uh, cons, right? So that's something you have to consider. What if you save all this money in the 529 and your child decides not to go to college? One of the pros or flexibility in that is that you can transfer the money from sibling A to maybe their brother or sister or a niece or nephew or some other family member. That's one of the uh, flexibility or pros, right? It can be transferred from this child if he decides not to go to college to another family member. Another aspect of the 529 is that the funds in the 529 can also be used to pay off student loans. I believe the student loan of the beneficiary, up to $10,000, right? So a child, say they went to college and they um, used the 529 and now there's a little extra money left over. They can use up to $10,000 to pay off student loans, right? Which is a good benefit. One of the cons of the 529 is the limitation of investments. Most of them are going to be, most, in most of them you're going to be limited to the option they have, whether it's the funds and so on. And you're going to be limited to that, right? You may not have the option to invest in individual stocks, right? Probably most likely you won't. So that's a big limitation. So that's something you want to consider, right? If you see a great investment that where you can get better return, you won't be able to use it. And if you do, you'll be penalized. So that's something to consider. One, a, a very great addition that was recently added, and it's actually effective this year in 2024, is that is the ability to convert some of the 529 funds into a Roth IRA, right? It was part of the Secure 2.0 Act. So they, so let's break this down. Say you use the 529 again, you went to college and you're all done. And even if you're not, right? But there's a portion of the 529 and you would want to, and you would like to convert that to a Roth. Remember, the contribution to the 529 in most cases are after tax, right? They, most, people are not, most people are not given a tax deduction. You can take that portion of that, you can take a portion of that, and I think they enable you to contribute, or they enable you to contribute up to $35,000 of your 529 into a Roth. You can convert it into a Roth, up to $35,000. And that's going to be the Roth in the beneficiary of your child's name. One of the caveats is that 529 has to have been open for at least 15 years. So you may have the money there, but maybe the account has not been opened 15 years. Maybe you opened the account when the, your child was 10, and now he's 20. It's only been open 10 years. You would have to wait until the account has been open for 15 years. Then you can roll some of that money over into a Roth. It is a great advantage to get these kids kind of started, right? 
So that's basically the nuts and bolts of the 529. Other options for saving for college. One of the options you can save for college is using a Roth IRA in the parent's name, right? So parents have the ability, because they have earned income, to open a Roth IRA. Roth IRA, as you already know, is funded with after-tax contribution, right? You don't get a tax deduction. That money, that, that money now grows tax-free. You can withdraw your contribution before age 59 and a half, which is considered retirement age, with no penalty, right? So let me repeat that again. You can withdraw your contribution to a Roth IRA at any time, no questions asked, and do whatever you want with it, right? Only the contribution. The earnings now have to sit in the account until you are at least 59 and a half, and the account has been open for at least five years. So imagine you have a child in college and you have a Roth IRA and um, you, know, you have $100,000 in there and uh, you have contributed um, $80,000. You can withdraw the $80,000 that you have contributed, right, which is your basis or your contribution before you're 59 and a half. So you could maybe take them out to help your child in college. The $20,000 in this example, the earnings, you couldn't touch without fees and penalties until you're age 59 and a half. And the account has been open for five years. So a Roth IRA is another option of funds to withdraw from to help your children with college. Mm -hmm. Of course, there's pros and cons with that too, right? The pros, one of the pros with the, one of the, pros with the Roth IRA is that uh, you, can, you can invest in whatever you want, right? You have no limitation, like the 529. You can invest in individual stocks, you can invest in ETF, okay? One of the cons with the Roth IRA that you are limited with how much you can contribute a year, right? If you're under 50, you can only contribute right now, I think, uh, $7,000. If you're over 50, you can contribute an additional $1,000, a catch-up contribution. So you can contribute $8,000. So it's kind of a, so, right, so that's a con. That's one of the con. So there's also something you may come across called a Coverdell Educational Savings Account. You cannot contribute as much as in the 529. So you can only contribute $2,000 a year. Whereas with the 529, you can contribute I want, to, I want to say you can contribute probably $10,000 a year, maybe, but check that. But you can definitely contribute more in the Coverdell. You can definitely contribute more in the 529. In the Coverdell, only $2,000 per year, per child, you can contribute. But that, I think you have more investment flexibility in the Coverdell. So more investment flexibility in the Coverdell, but you have only $2,000 you can um, contribute. And again, the money grows tax-free. Let me add this. With both the uh, 529 and the Coverdell Educational Savings Account, you can use it not just for college. It can be used also from, for K through 12, private school. So if your child goes to a private school, you can use some of that funds to pay their tuition and expenses from K through 12. And if your child decides not to go to college, 529 and uh, the Coverdell Educational Savings Account can also be used, the funds can be used for trade school. So if they go in for trade, such as electrician, plumber, carpentry, any type of advanced or post-secondary education, right? If your child wants to become a pilot um, and the training, the training can be paid for with five through nine funds. So bottom line, the five through nine is, a, is an educational account that you can put money in for college for your children, right? If your children decide not to go to college, it can be passed on to other family members, right? Um, you're usually limited in the investment that you can use, right? But the money grows tax-free and it gets withdrawn tax-free for qualified educational expenses. If you use it for other reasons, then there'll be 
penalty than fees, right? Roth IRA is another option that you can use. And then you also have the Coverdell Educational Savings Account. So guys, do your own due diligence, your research. Um, you can maybe use a combination, right? Draw funds part, partly from the 529, partly from your Roth IRA, partly from the Coverdell. And then we forgot to even mention, you can use a regular brokerage account. Just a regular brokerage account. Again, there is no tax advantages, but you have flexibility in investment. You can use it for whatever you want. So keep an open mind, do your research, your due diligence, and then come up with a plan that works best for you. It's the MD Investor with another video to try to increase our financial IQ so we can teach our children and break the cycle of generational poverty. MD Investor, out.